Hi there YouTube, thank you for watching the Shell Drake channel. In this video we're going to be doing a two part video. The first part of this video we're going to do a disassembly and reassembly of the M1 bolts. Simultaneously we're going to be reviewing this uh, M1A bolt disassembly tool that is purchased from Brownells. I'm not going to say much about it other than it costs seventy dollars and you can use it to take apart not only M1A bolts but M1 Garand bolts as well. Uh, all you have to do to change that uh, from an M1 disassembly tool, correction, M1A disassembly tool to an M1 disassembly tool is to remove this pin right here and shift this lever into, mo into the most rearward position. And that will allow you to take apart an M1 gear and bolt. Uh, this is going to be a straightforward video. You can see straightforward how this bolt disassembly tool works and how easy it actually is. Now on to the disassembly of the bolt. Disassembling this piece of shit is not for the faint of heart. If you don't know what you're doing, even if you do know what you're doing, uh, when you take apart this bolt, there are several parts that are under immense spring tension that can go flying off into the middle of nowhere. And if you're not careful, you can easily lose those parts. My recommendation when taking apart this bolt is to actually do it inside a clear plastic bag. That way, if any of those parts do go flying off, you can easily find them inside the bag. So, without further ado, I'm going to go and brief you on the parts of the bolt I'm sure most of you already know. This right here is the firing pin at the rear of the bolt. Right here you have your left lug. Here you have your right lug. Attached to the right lug you have your bolt roller right here. Inside this crevice between the bolt face and the right lug, is what is known as the extractor. It is, it is one piece that goes right through the bolt and comes through the other side. It is this piece that holds together the firing pin and what is known as the eject ejector which is right here at the base of my tip. So once that ejector uh, gets removed there are two springs that you have to watch out that may fly out into the middle of nowhere. One spring is located inside this crevice right here and that is attached to a plunger that pushes up against the extractor in this direction. That is the extractor plunger spring. The sp second, as I mentioned, is the ejector spring and the ejector assembly right here. Those are all being held in by this end of the ejector right here, so the second you push up on that, those two springs will fly out. So in order to use the M1A tool, this is the front of the tool, this is the bottom of the tool. You'll notice that the tool has several parts. First you have your lever assembly right here to the rear. That simply levers the bolt into place so that you can get a firm grip on it. To the front right here, you have a small hex nut right there at the front of the face. This is where the bolt face is going, going to be resting and ideally that is exactly where you want to put the ejector into when you're placing the bolt onto the, uh, the tool itself. So once the tool is in place, this right here is what comes up and down to push that section of the ejector right out. So when you push that out, the ejector hits this and maintains inside the bolt so that you can easily remove the extractor and the extractor plunger and the extractor plunger spring. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to actually take apart this bolt right now. I'm going to be very careful so that these springs don't disappear and fly off into the abyss of my room. So this is how you place the bolt into the tool. You want to ensure that the right side is nice and flush with the right edge and the right top edge of this bolt. You want to hold that down firmly and then you want to make sure that that ejector is seated nicely into that hex hex screw or the allen screw that uh, it actually is. Now once it's seated hold the bolt firm with your thumb placing pressure on the right side of the bolt and slowly close the lever on top of the bolt. Now once you press down on this lever right here, 
That is going to wedge the bolt in place so that you can get a firm overhand grasp of the bolt. Now when you do so, you want to make sure that that ejector is sitting flush and not moving away from that Allen key that's protruding from the front face of this tool. So I'm pushing on it right now, and now it is firmly seated against the bolt face. All you want to do now is you want to push down on the table while putting your thumb on the extractor. The reason why you put your thumb down on the extractor is so it doesn't fly off when you uh, push it out. So with a firm grasp, you're going to lay the tip of this tool onto a table, holding the extractor, and gently press down. Okay, just had to readjust there. Now I'm just going to press my thumb on top of the extractor with an overhand grasp. I'm going to slowly push downwards on this tool so that this button gets pushed down. Always make sure that the extractor is being held and just push down until you hear it click. At that point, you'll see that the extractor is held ajar. And at this point, what you want to do is take your flat edge, hold on to that spring, and just slowly relieve the pressure. At this point, you can see that your extractor falls right out and is completely loose. Now what you want to do, because uh, it's kind of hard to see, but this button is now under pressure with the bolt. So the easiest thing to do is grab an Allen screw that will fit. Uh, I'll tell you the measurements of this Allen screw later. And just gently push that button back out. Okay, there we go. Let's push back out. At this point, be very careful. There is your plunger, extractor plunger and extractor plunger string. Just bring that out and place it down. Here you go. There's your extractor. All the while, while I was doing that, I was maintaining a firm grasp of this uh, bolt. Now with the bolt 2, I'm going to slightly ease off the pressure on the lever. And the ejector spring comes out. Right there. So as you can see, Right here is the ejector and the ejector spring, and that's quite a bit of pressure. Now the reason I'm taking this bolt apart is so that I can actually replace this ejector spring which is somewhat bent. So if you take apart the rear of the bolt, you can remove the firing pin. And there you have it. That is your disassembly of the M1A, M14, and M1 Garand bolt. You have your firing pin, your ejector spring and your ejector up front, eject extractor plunger and extractor spring, extractor, and your bolt. I highly advise that you do not take this bolt roller apart, but if you need to, you would probably want to go take a look at a gunsmith so that you can actually put that on without marring the roller itself. And that is all you need to know for disassembling the M1A bolt.